Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series making simple Flappy Robin for a browser using Cocos 2DS JavaScript. So here I've got the uh, browser open with the game and also the developer console detecting the touches on touch began. What I want to do in this video is get the Robin to jump up and down when uh, we touch the screen and if the Robin falls to below the middle of the floor then I want him to reset to the start of the screen and then sit there waiting for us to touch the screen again. The first thing we need to do then, thinking about this, is we need some way to update the position of the robin, the update function here, continuously um, every frame. And the way to do this is to schedule a function to be called, and it's actually very, very easy to do. We just need to simply say this.schedule. And there are various versions of scheduling functions. You can find that in the samples in, uh, I think it's called scheduler test or schedule test. And we're going to just have an on tick. There's actually a default update function, but we'll do it uh, manually. So we're going to call on tick once every frame. So we need to define this on tick function, otherwise things aren't going to work. So we'll just say on tick, and then that's a function. And it takes one argument, and that is delta time. And forget the comma on the end, otherwise we'll get problems. So inside the on tick here, we want to update our Robin, but we also want to reset our Robin to the middle of the screen if he's fallen below the middle of the floor. So we'll say if this dot and underscore Robin dot Y is less than this dot underscore floor dot Y divided by two, then we want to reset our Robin. So the first thing we need to do then is we need to call the reset on the Robin. And inside here, the Robin state will be set to stopped, so no longer moving. And we just want to then set the Y position of the Robin to the uh, director wind size height divided by two. So just the middle, in other words, the middle of the screen. So let's just take the wind size here. And where are we? I've lost myself. Here we are. Dot height and then divided by two. And I'm sorry if you can hear a load of dogs barking in the background. So first of all, if the robin's down, it falls below the middle of the floor, then we reset him. And what we always want to do then in inside inside the tick function then is say this underscore robin. And we call then the update function on the robin. So update robin with our delta time. So that's the first thing we need to do. And what I will do very quickly, just to demonstrate the scheduling of the, scheduling, scheduling sorry, of the uh, on tick function, is just quickly print delta time to the screen um, so you can see what's actually going on. So let's just print delta time there. And for now, I'll just take this stuff out because it's incomplete. And we'll just quickly run the application as is, just to see the effect of the scheduling of this on tick function. So you can see now, I've got a constant scrolling here with delta time 0.01768 seconds, more or less, running all the time. So you can see there that we've scheduled our function correctly to run. Um, I'll just delete that and put everything in here as so and save. And now I'll just reset the uh, browser so we don't have that scrolling continuously. OK. So that's all of this part done here. The other thing I want to do is you'll notice that we've got a top of screen uh, variable for the Robin sprite here. The reason for this is, is as we tap the screen, if I just bring up the browser, the Robin, if we keep tapping continuously, will actually fly off the top of the screen. We want to limit him to actually stay at the top of the screen. So in this case, then we need to set this top of screen variable. So I'll just go into uh, game.js and where we declare the Robin here, it's a bit of a lazy way of doing things. Um, we'll just set the Robin dot top of screen and let's just take top of screen and copy it like this. And these dogs are annoying me. And we'll just say that that equals then size dot height so that we limit the robin to not going off the top of the screen. Well, we use that to not limit the robin going off the top of the screen. OK, so we're updating OK. Uh, we're updating the robin. Now what we need to do is actually make the robin skip upwards when we touch the, rob when we touch the screen. So 
To do that then, what we need to say is, is first of all, we need to say that if the robin, so if a target here, and then it's underscore robin, and then we say dot state is equal to, and it's k, uh, robin state, where are we? Robin state stopped. I've just been distracted because I've seen in my preparation I'd added gravity in here and forgotten to remove it in preparation for the video. Sorry about that. So target robin dot state is equal to k robin state stopped. Then we'll need to set this state now equal to robin state moving. And I've not got the double equals in there, have I? So I'll just go back to game manager and state moving like so. All this is saying is we've touched the screen, the robin was in a stopped state, we want him to get moving, so we'll set him moving. And the other thing we can also do is just say tar and set start speed. Now the reason is if the robin was moving and we tap the screen then we want him to jump, so we want him to have his full on uh, start speed, which is the K robin start speed Y. Um, and if we set him actually moving, we want exactly the same thing to happen. So we'll just add this below like this, and I need to add that in like this as well. So that sets up when the touch goes, everything working okay with the robin. I'm just going to refresh the browser, make sure I haven't made any spelling mistakes in here, and I don't seem to have done it. It's not complaining whilst we touch. Okay, so now we can move into the part of the robin. The first thing you need to do, and I'm sorry I didn't remove it, is you need to add a gravity variable in of minus 620. And the way things are going to work with the robin then, first of all, we shall add in, let me just double check what I've done inside tick here. Reset, okay, good, we've got the reset added in. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll look at the reset. We're resetting the robin, which means we're going to set this state and it's equal to k robin state stopped because we've reset the robin and the other thing we can do is we can call this dot set start speed as well because it can be ready to go the next time when we have our start speed so our upward speed in the y direction we just say that our speed y then is equal to the k robin start speed y constant which is there and of course I need this as well so that's now up and working a tube collision box will leave alone and the interesting stuff is going to happen then inside the update robin so the way we're going to do it is actually using some very basic maths or physics and that is you'll remember maybe from school that we have the standard uh, s equals uh, ut plus half at squared, this kind of thing. There are some um, to get your distance travelled, and you can get your speed by saying, oh, your new speed by saying uh, your time times the speed plus the initial speed, s equals u plus, uh, sorry, v equals u plus at. Um, you can look those all up. They're just standard speed equations, and they work out quite well also in here. So we're going to do our update and say that if this dot state is equal to k robin state, and it's not stopped, it's moving. So if the robin is in a moving state, then we're going to update his position according to the time since the last update, which is this dt and then the various parameters currently. So we can say the var distance equals naught, and we can say var new speed, so the new speed the robin's traveling at after we do this update is equal to naught. And now we just use the physics equation, so we say that our distance equals this dot speed y, so initial speed, so ut times dt, so that's s equals ut plus and then 0.5 times uh, gravity, times uh, time squared, so dt multiplied by dt. That then will get the distance travelled since the last update at the current speed, and then the new speed that we're travelling then, remember we've got deceleration on us, so it's this dot speed y, the current speed, and then plus our gravity multiplied by our delta time, because our gravity is our a, it's our acceleration going in a negative direction. So we have our distance travelled, which is in y direction, and our new speed. So we can now say this and set position 
y and we can set this to this dot uh, y I didn't even need to use get position I don't think plus the uh, distance like so and in fact I don't think I even need to use the set position y here do I, I can just do this like this so we've got the distance traveled in the y direction updating the position of the robin and now is the little bit just to limit from the top of the screen so we're going to say that if this dot y is greater than this dot top of screen so we've gone off the top of the screen then all we'll do is simply set the position so we'll say this dot y is equal to this dot top of screen and then we'll set the current speed to zero so we instantly start falling so this dot speed y is equal to 0, 0.0 like so so if the robin hits the top of the screen then he'll start falling and that should be all we need to do remember we're calling this update robin on every tick here as long as the robin hasn't uh, crashed and died and when we call update robin we check inside update robin is the robin indeed moving if he's not then we won't do anything so just before I run it as a double double check when the robin is originally uh, created then we set I'm just checking now when we originally create the robin if we actually create the robin still sitting inside the screen so let's call robin reset actually on the robin when we start up as well so let's just say this dot and robin dot reset so that sets the robin state then inside the reset to stopped and sets its start speed which means it's in a stop state so as tick is called we won't actually do any updating of the robin because when the update is called we're in the stop state so we won't move then when we touch the screen if it was stopped he'll now be set moving which means we'll cause by the updates to have the update called calculating the position etc so fingers crossed I haven't made too many drastic errors in this and now if I tap the screen you can see the robin flies up to the top of the screen and now is slowly but surely sinking downwards which means something has well and truly gone wrong somewhere it shouldn't be quite like this let's see what I've done wrong uh, where are we in the update Robin have I missed something in here ah I've forgotten to set the update the speed so this dot speed y equals and new speed let's just try this again for one more time let's just refresh and now you can see indeed the Robin is moving nicely bouncing nicely on the screen and if I let him fall to the middle he gets reset to the middle screen and waits then to be touched before moving again good so a little blip at the end there um, I didn't do much preparation for this video I've just written it on the fly which is why there were a couple of silly errors but uh, forgive me uh, the next video then we'll actually start thinking about adding the mountains clouds and trees and things onto the screen and getting them scrolling across thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one